Who wouldn't want a billion dollars? Honestly, you might not want a billion dollars once you hear why being a billionaire actually sucks. First, and this should be the most obvious, wealth might not necessarily change you, but it definitely changes the people around you. In the survey of the ultra-rich conducted by Boston College, respondents claimed that their personal relationships were directly impacted by their wealth and how much of it they spread. As one person put it, I started to wonder how many people we know would cut us off if they didn't think they could get something from us. Co-workers, friends, even family members all become suspicious characters to a billionaire. How much of their affection and attention is the real thing? It's why people such as presidents adopt a no new friends rule after attaining higher office like the mega wealthy, the mega famous and mega visible are prime targets for opportunists from every corner. One financial firm even has psychiatrists on staff specifically to address wealthy clients' issues with family members. And don't get us started on the love lives of billionaires. In addition to the worry that your spouse might just be a gold digger, writer Paul Sullivan pointed out that the expense of a divorce suit, which gives most of us pause, is not a concern for the ultra-wealthy, making intimacy disposable. But don't take our word for it, let's look at J. Paul Getty, the petroleum industrialist worth over $6 billion when he passed away at age 83 in 1976. Getty was married five times in his lifetime. Four of those marriages lasted less than four years, and all of them ended in divorce. Getty also had a rotating door of mistresses, but his failed marriages continued to haunt him. Despite the money, despite the ready access to willing lovers of all ages, Getty said a lasting relationship is only possible if you are a business failure. I would gladly give all my millions for just one lasting marital success. Getty's five marriages did result in five sons, but that brought another headache. And our second reason why you don't want to be a billionaire, you worry more about your kids. Some billionaires have said they worry their children will become too comfortable, too entitled, and may even resent not having more. Not just in terms of material wealth, but in terms of being automatically trusted to take on the family business. Ben Mesrich, the author of The Accidental Billionaires and a slew of other books on millennial wealth, said the children of the supremely wealthy often have lots of issues because they've never had to struggle, and struggle makes us strong. And if you don't have to struggle, you just drift along. Or as Michael O'Church also put it, the children of the wealthy tend to live in an uncanny valley, enough ambition to know they should be making something of themselves, but not enough discipline to actually do it. In a BBC article from 2015, one alleged son of a billionaire wrote that many relatives of the patriarch, not seeing the work that goes into starting, building, and maintaining the wealth, expect to live lavishly now without having to earn any of the benefits the chief breadwinner works for. Now imagine you are the billionaire. You know the struggle to make money, you know how to maintain it, but since you can't take it with you, wouldn't you want your kids to have those same skills? To see money as not given, but something to be valued? That's something the Getty family dealt with a lot. With five sons and 14 grandchildren, most of whom Getty was estranged from, there was bound to be some trouble. One of his sons was Eugene Paul Getty, who adopted the name John Paul Getty Jr. when he reconciled with his father after 12 years apart. Getty named Jr. the president of Getty Oil Italiana in Rome, and while it was fine for a while, the drift occurred. Two years after divorcing his first wife, Jr. married Dutch actress model Talitha Pohl. Together, the two embraced the counterculture of the late 60s, living off of Jr.'s annual $100,000 income from the family trust. Jr. lost his job with the company as he and Talitha fell into drug addiction, and the two separated as she got sober. Jr. wound up running from Italy to escape drug charges, leaving behind his 16-year-old son, John Paul Getty III. Paul also drifted, kicked out of school, left to his own devices. He spent his nights in discotheques and his days squatting with friends. Even if Paul didn't have his grandfather's money, he had the name, and he used it to his advantage. He wasn't even above using the name to get paid for a nude photo spread in an Italian skin mag. And when he needed still more money, he plotted his own kidnapping. It's the exact scenario billionaires fear. Their children and grandchildren, entitled and not struggling, lean on their family's money and or name to live carelessly. Unfortunately, courting that kind of attention makes you a target. Our third reason why being a billionaire sucks. When you're a billionaire, people try to get your money any way they can. Brian Clayton, CEO of GreenPal, started his first company when he was 18 and claims the first lawsuits against him came soon after. It's an issue that comes up with a lot of lottery winners. Lawsuits suddenly come out of the woodwork, whether it's from the liquor store owner who sold the ticket or a friend collecting on a 20-year-old promise to split winnings. It's why most lawyers advise clients to retain anonymity after a lottery win. But beyond the legal battles billionaires deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, there's also the threat against them and their family. 
Whether from blackmailers looking to exploit the personal lives of relatives or from kidnappers looking to extort money, William Randolph Hearst's granddaughter Patricia was kidnapped in 1974 and wasn't even returned after the ransom was paid. Instead, she was brainwashed into joining her kidnappers in a crime spree and wasn't rescued until late 1975. Many billionaires themselves have been kidnapped, like French industrialist Edouard Jean Ampin in 1978, who was held for 63 days for an 80 million franc ransom, or beer baron Freddie Heineken, who was kidnapped in 1983 and whose ransom of $11 million was the highest paid for a hostage. And famously, that happened with Paul Getty. Though he didn't go through with his plan to get himself kidnapped, an Italian crime syndicate wound up abducting him in 1973. They demanded $17 million in ransom from his grandfather instead of paying he negotiated, even after the kidnappers cut off Paul's ear and mailed it to a newspaper. Even when the kidnappers reduced the demand to $3.3 million, Getty only agreed to pay $2.2 million, the maximum amount that could be tax deductible. He loaned the remaining $800,000 to his son, Paul's father, at 4% interest. Though Paul was returned alive in December, the trauma would affect him for the rest of his life. He spiraled into drug and alcohol addictions, suffering a stroke after an overdose. When you have a lot of money, you and your family are in constant danger. By the way, a lot of people have a lot to say over the years about Getty's way of dealing with his grandson's kidnappers. That's the number four worst thing about being a billionaire. Your every action and decision is under a microscope, meaning added pressure to behave the quote-unquote right way. And what do people consider the right way? Generosity. There's an expectation toward billionaires that because they have so much money, they should be ready and willing to give up more and more of it. Engineer and tech thought leader Philip Remaker pointed out that people presume that you can readily tap your vast wealth to address any problem. You will always be criticized for not spending enough on something to solve the problem. The Boston survey we mentioned before, one of its architects described the word rich as having become a pejorative. There's an immediate dislike of people we believe have too much money. Some of that dislike makes sense. In economic crises such as the pandemic lockdowns of the past year or the Asian financial crisis of 1997, the billionaire class is the least affected. While American unemployment rates skyrocketed in 2020, its billionaire class increased their wealth by over $430 billion. South Korea, lauded by many for its ability to go from one of the poorest nations in the world to one of the most developed in less than 50 years, also sees a disparity, with only 1.3% of its population making middle-class earnings. Some of the wealthy try to assuage this money guilt by giving more and more, making charitable contributions, starting philanthropies, sponsoring advocacy groups. Even Andrew Carnegie, one of the richest men in modern history, said that the man who dies thus rich dies disgraced. He devoted the final 18 years of his life to various philanthropies and foundations. Still, many billionaires note that it's impossible to fix every problem in the world, no matter how hard they try, and feel there's undue criticism that comes their way for not doing enough, even when they try to do something. Now, okay, the problem in J. Paul Getty's case was kidnapped a grandson, and people judged him a lot for negotiating the final ransom price and B. having his son pay it back. But consider things from his point of view. As he pointed out at the time, I have 14 grandchildren. If I pay one penny, I'll have 14 kidnapped grandchildren. He also reasoned that in addition to encouraging other criminals, paying would only whet the appetite of the original kidnappers. Just two years later, Patty Hearst's kidnappers refused to give her up after the ransom was paid. Getty, like many a billionaire before and after him, was left with a tough choice. Pay up and he exposes himself as a soft touch. Don't pay up and he confirms the public suspicions that the wealthy are greedy, uncaring people. Actually, Getty's actions were pretty canny. He knew what the kidnappers wanted more than anything was the millions of dollars. They weren't going to get rid of Paul, their only asset, before getting paid off. In negotiating the price down, Getty refused to let the criminals dictate the rules of society. And in making his son pay back the interest on the ransom, Getty was forcing him to actually take responsibility for a problem he had helped create. Though it does highlight a problem that you probably don't think billionaires have. It's our fifth reason why being a billionaire sucks. You worry about money. Obviously, we all worry about money, a lot of us because we don't seem to have enough of it. But becoming a billionaire doesn't make that go away. For one thing, people forget that in order to have billions of dollars, you have to make billions of dollars and keep making it. To quote the producer Remy Blumenfield, they worry about losing it, they worry about how it's invested, they worry about the effect it's going to have. They also know the value of every penny. Bill Gates admitted that despite being worth $75 billion, he would still pick up a $100 bill off the street, though he says he would then immediately donate it to his foundation. 
Besides keeping track of all that money, most billionaires also have to keep making it. And Business Insider pointed out that despite the sacrifices made to build your wealth, people will perceive you as working too hard, being too ruthless in business, that your success only comes because you've been heartless. Getty, for instance, could not take a moment off. His industrial empire consisted of over 200 different businesses. Seeing to the demands of his employees, family members, and apparently kidnappers, he worked 16 to 18 hour days even at the age of 81. That's what it takes to maintain a billion dollars. But because he worked for it, knew the value of it, and had others around him recognize the value, he was branded a heartless miser. One of the things he was infamous for was installing a payphone in his mansion for guests to use. But there was a reason. Getty found that visitors took advantage of his hospitality and would make lengthy long-distance calls on his dime. The payphone put a stop to that. His frugality extended to his children. When his six-year-old son needed treatment for a brain tumor, Getty admonished his fifth and final wife for negotiating the medical bills ahead of time. His reasoning? Some doctors like to charge a rich person 20 times more than their regular fee. It's cold. It's calculated. It's how you maintain a billion-dollar empire. And that's the final reason you don't want to be a billionaire. It will change your sense of morality. The business acumen that made you a billionaire will also cloud some morality judgments. Like Bill Gates prioritizing maintaining intellectual property rights on life-saving vaccines over, you know, accessibility to those life-saving medicines. Or the number of corporations that during World War II valued the cheap slave labor found in concentration camps. Corporation like Nestle and Kodak. When all you see is the bank account, profits become priority over people. That's not just a judgment on our part. Multiple studies have shown this to be true. The richer a person becomes, the more likely he is to cheat at games, run red lights, break traffic laws, and even shoplift. Though, as one wealth expert put it, having access to billions probably exacerbates your qualities, the worst and best part of you, because now you have the means to explore it with few consequences. Now check out why you don't want to make more than $75,000 or click this other video instead.